Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is part two featuring skincare for my Sephora sale recommendations. And I've already posted my part one for my makeup recommendations. I will link that below. I'm gonna go through everything I love at Sephora, every single skincare step, essentially in order of application. I'll have all of the info below in the description box and on screen for the sale event, just because I don't wanna bore you with the details, but um, the code is time to save. And of course I will have everything linked below. By way of introduction, if you're new here, I have combo oily skin. It's more oily in the summer, more combo in the winter. Um, I do, I am someone that's prone to congestion, so you'll see recommendations for actives, but I also have sensitive and redness prone skin. So as much as I love my actives, I really have to balance that out with sensitive, sort of barrier boosting, soothing products. So you're gonna see a balance of both of those things in my recommendations. There are actually quite a few new skincare brands that have arrived at Sephora in the last year. So I have some pretty new favorites and recent discoveries as well as some old favorites too. Let's get into it starting with cleanser, um, especially first cleansers. So oil cleansers, balm cleansers, things that will remove SPF and makeup. One of these newer brands that are at Sephora is called Dom Dom and this is a Japanese skincare brand. This is the Silk Rice Cleansing Oil. It's a really um, surprisingly lightweight cleansing oil. It's not too greasy, it's not too emollient, but it really breaks down makeup and SPF very quickly, including mascaras as well as waterproof mascaras. This is fragrance-free, so it's actually a really nice option for sensitive skin types or for people who maybe are more sensitive to fragrance in general in cleansers, especially around the eye area. One of the main oils in here is rice bran oil, which I really like as an ingredient. I also like that it doesn't give me cloudy vision, it doesn't sting my eyes, all important when it comes to a cleansing oil, and I've just really been enjoying it. I only need like one or two pumps to take off a full face of makeup. I haven't been able to try everything from Dom Dom, but I've really been liking this, and they also have a cream cleanser that's really nice. So that's a new favorite. One of my old favorites that I have emptied like five or six tubes of probably is the Paula's Choice Omega Plus Omega Plus Complex Cleansing Balm. I love that it's a cleansing balm that comes in a tube. It's really easy to use. Again, it's fragrance-free. It's great for sensitive skin types. It breaks down SPF, makeup beautifully, rinses clean, and neither of these leave a film behind, which is really key. For second cleansers, I have a new favorite that I've really been loving that I actually started using after um, post-treatment. So I had a few laser treatments this year and the Kate Somerville Goat Milk Moisturizing Cleanser has been lovely. Um, this is obviously one of the smaller sizes, but I've gone through a bigger tube as well. So this is a really lightweight cream cleanser. It's not too heavy, it's not too emollient, and it's certainly not a first cleanser. It's definitely a second cleanser. Some cream cleansers can be a bit too heavy and leave a film on, this, on the skin, but this one doesn't. I feel like it just leaves my skin really hydrated. It's super gentle. It's it doesn't leave a film behind and it rinses clean. It's also fragrance free. You'll see a lot of gentle, sensitive skin recommendations um, in general, just because my skin has had some flare ups in the last year. And this has definitely been something that I feel comfortable using even when my skin is at its most sensitive. Moving into toners, essences, mists, these kind of more fluid, liquidy, hydrating categories that sometimes bleed into one another. I have the Tower 28 SOS Mist. This is something I have in rotation at all times. This is a hypochlorous acid-based mist, and what that does is it's not an active, like a traditional exfoliating acid. It actually helps soothe the skin, um, especially if you're eczema prone, dermatitis prone, redness prone. I find that this really helps keep my skin um, happy, and it's something that I use basically every evening after I get out of the shower. It's a very uh, watery mist. It's not emollient, there's no oils in it, it just feels like water, but I do find that when I use this, it keeps eczema and dermatitis at bay. Next up, I have the Laneige Cream Skin Serapeptide Toner and Moisturizer. 
Um, so you can basically use this as a toner or as a mist. This year, Laneige redid their cream skin line, which is one of my favorites. It's fragrance-free. It's all about um, sort of helping your skin barrier. It has ceramides. This is a milky, creamy mist, but it's not uh, too rich and it's not oily or greasy. They've also made this refillable, which is really nice. So you can buy the bottle and then you can buy separate refills as well. If you have um, any skin barrier issues, Issues, like like eczema or if you have any sensitivity where you can't use actives but you want to add additional layers of hydration and just fluidity to your skincare this is a really really lovely choice and then getting into toners I have the Dr. Jart Ceramidin plus skin barrier toner um, this is something I love Sean loves actually Sean uses this even more religiously than I do he's gone through several bottles of it um, Dr. Jart also redid their ceramide in line this year um, and they added I think double the amount of ceramides in the formulas so if you're not familiar with this it's kind of on the richer side of toners you'll see it has this milky quality to it it really spreads and glides over the skin nicely it has a bit of like a fresh clean scent but it's it's not overly scented and it really plumps up the skin if you're looking for glowy glassy skin this is such a nice layer to have under your moisturizer or other skincare. I actually love the smell of it. I find it really refreshing and clean. And then I always include this in the in this category, even though it's technically a serum. This is the Sodwazu First Care Activating Serum. Um, Sodwazu is a K-beauty brand. They're a luxury K-beauty brand. And this is, I think, their most iconic product. It's something that I've loved for many, many years. So um, they draw on ginseng and hanbang ingredients. They're traditional Korean herbal ingredients. And this is a really interesting product because it's a fluid texture and you're, you're meant to use this as your first step after cleansing even though it's called a serum it's that first step right after cleansing so this is what it looks like it has this liquid texture and it really does smell like the herbal ingredients i it's always a sensorial experience to use sorwasu Obviously, it's a luxury brand, so you are looking for things like beautiful premium packaging. You're looking for a sensory experience beyond just the performance of the skincare products themselves. I find that this adds, um, again, a really glassy glow to the skin. My skin feels always really soothed and calmed and hydrated after I use this, and I use it both in the morning and in the evening. I also feel like this adds a lot of radiance and a sort of like porcelain-like quality to the skin. Skin. It adds a lot of brightness and that's something that Sodwasu does really really well. Next I'm going to move into serums and specifically non-active serums. I do have a category for actives and treatments coming next, but these are serums that are meant to maybe hydrate, brighten, soothe, things like that, but they don't have necessarily active ingredients in them. First up I have the Merit Great Skin Serum and I only have a little baby size of it because I've already emptied my large bottle. So this is a biphase serum. It's actually very, very fluid and watery. So biphase means it has both oil and water within the formula and you sort of shake it together to mix all of the ingredients. It's hydrating, it feels like a deep drink of water for the skin, and it is also really good at priming the skin for makeup. Obviously, Merit is a makeup brand, and this is their first skincare venture, but it's really, really good, and I do miss having the larger bottle in my collection, I have to say. One of the new-ish brands, I guess it's been about a year, um, that's arrived at Sephora is In Beauty Project, and they have a really good price point for from the 20 to 30 dollar range they have a slushy serum moisturizer and i've talked about this before it's just a really fun serum i think it's um, a little bit of skin entertainment and this serum comes out as a sort of gel texture let me show you so here's the bottle comes out like that and there's a stiffness to it and then when you blend it into the skin it instantly turns into like this wet feeling fluid texture it's a really lightweight hydrating serum so i think it's great for oily skins maybe teens if you're in your 20s or if you're just looking for a very simple hydrating step it has a bit of a light 
citrusy scent, but it does fade. It's not something that really bothers me or that I even really notice. And it's just a nice lightweight hydrating step in a routine. Another hydrating serum that I've been enjoying is the Kate Somerville Hydrocate Recharging Serum. So this is really meant to hydrate the skin, plump up the skin, and this has a bit of a milkier gel texture. So it looks like this when you pump it out. This has a bit more bounce for sure than um, the slushy or the Merit Great Skin. This is kind of a classic serum texture. It sinks into the skin really nicely. This does have a bit of a stronger floral scent, so just FYI, but I do find that this seems to plump up my skin. It gives me long lasting hydration throughout the day, especially when you pair it actually with their water cream, which I will show you in a little bit. And then I have two slightly more luxurious serums. These again are sensorial, they're experiential, they have um, just that more luxury quality and price tag to them. So the first one is the Ranavat Brightening Saffron Serum. If you're not familiar with Ranavat, they are an Ayurvedic based brand. So they use a lot of the ingredients and herbs and spices that you see in Ayurvedic traditions. And this is kind of like an oil serum. It has uh, the slip and emollients of an oil, but it's more fluid. So it is um, in the serum category. It comes with a little dropper and the serum itself is an orange color. So it looks like that right there. It has a really beautiful herbal scent to it and it does sink in quickly. It's not like a straight up oil where it's going to mostly create like a barrier or a seal over your skin. The saffron is meant to brighten and because of the oils and hydrating ingredients in here, you get a bit of a longer lasting moisture and hydration than you would in just a straight up hydrating serum or like a water-based serum. This is a little bit richer and more emollient. So I think it's really great for more normal to dry skin types. And then I have this Hodwazu Concentrated Ginseng Renewing Serum. This was a limited edition package. Um, the regular packaging is a really beautiful orange and gold bottle. This is so beautiful. It really delivers radiance. It plumps up fine lines. I feel like my skin just looks glowy and just bright whenever I use this. It um, is a stiffer gel consistency, you can see right there, and you kind of work it in. It doesn't ever feel wet, and it also doesn't feel greasy. It just feels like a really nice cushiony layer to your skincare, and I, I love using this. I do kind of use it sparingly because it is on the pricier side. It's definitely a luxury item. But if you're looking to splurge, looking to maybe give a gift, I think this is a really, really nice one. And Sorozu also does really cute gift sets that I think are a really nice gift for like a mom or an auntie. Okay, let's move into treatments, which includes vitamin C's, acid exfoliants, and retinoids. So all of the active ingredients that you use for bright anti-aging, acne, clearing pores, etc. One of the biggest changes I've made this year has actually been moving away from L ascorbic acid. I never ever thought I would say this. Um, if you're not familiar, L ascorbic acid is kind of the most potent form of vitamin C, but it's also the most unstable, so it can be difficult to formulate. And I do have some longtime favorites like the Paula's Choice um, vitamin C booster, things like that, but I've moved towards incorporating more vitamin C derivatives that are just a little bit gentler on the skin and tend to be a little bit more uh, normal in pH, so they're not as irritating on the skin. So I have two. The first one is a newer release. It's from Paula's Choice. It's the 25% vitamin C plus glutathi gl glutathione, glutathione, I'm not sure, uh, clinical serum. And this, comes in this really cute little package. It's actually a really lovely lotion consistency. So it looks like this, and this includes a vitamin C derivative. Um, it actually has a pretty emollient quality to it. So you're going to get the brightening, um, maybe not as potently as you would with an L ascorbic acid, but vitamin C derivatives are still very brightening, they're effective, and they give you antioxidant protection, which helps with sun protection when paired with an SPF. The other vitamin C derivative that I have loved for a long time is the Summer Friday CC Me Serum. And this one is a lighter texture. It's more of like a clear fluid, 
consistency. It's more of a serum consistency. And it's also super, super hydrating. So I find that um, this really feels bouncy and plumping and cushiony on the skin. And they're both really, really nice options if you still want that brightening and antioxidant protection. But maybe you, like me, are moving away from L ascorbic acid, at least for now. A new brand that launched at Sephora this summer is Lion Pose. And this serum is a real powerhouse. So this is called the Unspotted Acid Jelly Night Serum. And this is meant to resurface and retexture. And let me just tell you about this blend of ingredients. So it's a 15% blend of azelaic, glycolic, lactic, and tranexamic acids. And it also includes glutathione, which is an antioxidant. It also hydrates, and um, specifically, this is meant for brightening dark spots and hy hyperpigmentation. But the AHAs in here with the lactic and glycolic will also help resurface the skin. I really, really did notice the brightening qualities of the serum. Um, you well, you might be able to tell. I had a big breakout right here uh, last week or so, and I always struggle with really bad pigmentation after breakouts. That's just the way my skin is. So after a breakout heals, I immediately turn to resurfacing treatments, brightening treatments, to make sure that that pigmentation is kept at bay as much as I can, that PIH. And I love the blend of acids in here. Obviously, when you hear that entire list of acids, it sounds a little bit scary, but this is a really well-balanced blend of acids, and I find that it it hasn't tingled, it hasn't burnt, it hasn't felt like I'm ever overdoing it. I've even used it just kind of in specific planes of my face, and I do find that it's been really, really effective. I also love the packaging. It has this like really nice ribbed packaging with a gold cap and then a pump and then the product itself is like a milky serum texture. As with all actives, I would say um, go gradually. Don't feel like you have to do too much all at once. This is not something I would use every single day or twice a day. I would use it at max every other day personally. And if it burns or tingles, that's a sign that it might be too much for your skin. So just scale it back or you can buffer it with um, a moisturizer underneath even. So let's talk about retinoids. There are many different strengths of retinoids. There's retinols, retinals. I actually do have have a video kind of breaking down all of the retinoids, so I'll link that below. Retinoids, or retinol specifically, is one of the most scientifically, or one of the only scientifically proven quote-unquote anti-aging or well-aging ingredients. It accelerates skin turnover, so it makes the skin appear brighter and smoother, but as with all active ingredients, I would say take it slow, take it easy, and then build up your uh, tolerance for the ingredient. One brand that I really trust when it comes comes to retinoids is Paula's Choice. They have a couple of different strengths available at Sephora. I think their weakest or most like beginner friendly one is their 0.3% retinol. And that also includes Bakuchiol. And that is a great place to start if you have sensitive skin and you're maybe nervous to dive into retinols, but you want to try it. That's where I would start. And then for a step up from that, they have their 1% retinol. That is a really good solid retinol strength. That's something that I would use maybe twice a week. And those both come in these like lotion-y textures that can definitely be your one and done step for the evening, or you can use as your final step in your skincare. The only thing I would say is don't combine them with other treatments and actives like vitamin C or acid exfoliants. We all like a little variety, so I also really enjoy the Summer Fridays um, Midnight Ritual Retinol Renewal Serum. I'm not sure the strength of the retinol in here. I would say it's still a very, like a moderate to intermediate strength, just based on my experience. It comes out in like a lotion-y texture. So again, this can be your only step. If you feel like you're more advanced, the Youth to the People Retinol is also really lovely. Um, I've emptied it, actually Sean emptied it a couple of months ago, so I don't have it in rotation right now. But retinol is a step up from retinol with an O. And that comes out as this really lovely yellow golden serum. That's the color of retinol. And it's a bit higher in strength, but I still find that it's it, it hasn't been irritating to me. And even Sean, who 
I think it was his first retinol that he was using. I like graduated him. Um, didn't have any irritation and he found it really softening and brightening, all of that stuff. So that's more of a serum step that I would use a moisturizer on top of. All right, let's talk about eye care. I have a lighter eye cream, a richer eye cream, and then an eye cream with retinol. So a couple of different choices. The lighter eye cream is the Youth to the People Peptides Plus C Energy Eye Concentrate. It's meant to brighten, smooth, and deepen puff. Here's what this looks like. It comes out as a lightweight lotion. It does have a bit of emollients, so even though the texture isn't super stiff, I feel like I'm getting the richness that I want. It also wears really nicely under makeup. It has vitamin C, so it makes it a nice daytime option, and it's also not too rich or too greasy. Those are the kinds of textures I look for in my PM routine, but this is really nice for the daytime. I also really love the Estee Lauder advanced night repair eye supercharged gel creme so they reformulated the anr eye products um, earlier this year i think and so they came out with this in gel cream form so it looks like this it has that jelly consistency and even though it's a jelly it's still quite rich and hydrating and i feel like it does really plump up the eye area my mom loves this as well so it's slightly i don't know if you can even see this it's slightly stiffer and it feels kind of buttery, surprisingly buttery for a gel formula. And I find that it really does sort of fill in fine lines and it gives you long lasting moisture around the eyes. I've used it during the day, but I do tend to prefer it in the evenings personally. Estee Lauder a r is a heritage uh, line essentially, but it's still so good and I still use the a r serum all the time. And then the eye cream with retinol for anti-aging, well aging, whatever you wanna call it, is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Eye Rescue. Um, I think this is the best skincare product in the Charlotte Tilbury line, and it's a really emollient, buttery eye cream. It's refillable, and it has a touch of retinol in it that is gentle enough to be around the eye area. I don't usually take my other retinols around the eye area, which is a little bit more sensitive. The skin is thinner, so it's nice to have a dedicated retinol eye product. This is really rich, buttery, emollient, and I feel like it actually does stay on through the night. It's not something I reach for during the day because it's richer, but I like having that thicker texture around my eyes at night. Okay, let's talk about moisturizers. I have water creams, gel creams, heavier moisturizers, night creams. So I'm gonna start with lighter textures. I actually have to correct myself because I think uh, Charlotte Tilbury released a new skincare item that I think is is one of my favorites now in the line. Um, this is the Magic Water Cream. Unlike the other skincare, the other moisturizers, and the regular Magic Cream, this is fragrance-free. And it's a water-based moisturizer, so it has the same nice jar packaging. It's also refillable. Here's what the texture looks like. I think for a water cream, it's actually on the richer side. It doesn't just melt away into a gel. It really is is a creamy moisturizing formula. It is so nice under makeup. I have found the regular Magic Cream to be a little bit too rich for my skin type. It's too emollient, but this gives you long lasting hydration. It seems like it plumps up the skin. Some water creams just seem like they evaporate off the face, and that's not the case with this one. I actually was really surprised that this was fragrance free when they released it earlier this summer, and it's been a really, really pleasant surprise to me. Another water cream I've been loving that I mentioned earlier is the Kate Somerville Hydra Kate Recharging Water Cream. Comes in an airless pump. It's the sister product to the serum. I actually should have mentioned this before the Charlotte Tilbury because this one is actually a little bit lighter in texture. It has slightly more of a gel consistency, but this actually has a longer lasting consistency. It's not just a gel that evaporates. It does give you long lasting hydration. Some water creams I find have are very silicone heavy. Um, neither of these feel that way. They won't pill under makeup or give you a weird textural sensation once it dries down. They actually do give you long lasting hydration and they don't feel like they're just gumming up on the skin. Getting into some slightly richer consistencies, Paula's Choice launched their Barrier Repair Advanced Moisturizer with tripeptide 5 and ceramides. Um, 
few months ago, I wanna say. This has been so nice. It's a surprisingly lightweight lotion texture, but it really packs a punch in terms of uh, rich feeling and that kind of buttery quality on the skin. It's the kind of rich moisturizer I like in that um, it's a loose texture, it's lotion-y, but it feels like it's really leaving um, a kind of cocoon over your skin. It feels really protective. It has the ceramides. It's fragrance-free. It's good for the skin barrier. A perfect moisturizer for sensitive skin types. Another moisturizer that really, really surprised me is the Lawless Forget the Filler Skin Plumping Line Smoothing Perfecting Cream. Um, Lawless primarily does makeup. They have some skincare items. They're sort of venturing into that category. And this moisturizer is really, really nice. Comes in a jar, looks like this. It has this pink color. It's also fragrance-free. It's a really good option for sensitive skins. And even though this is, um, kind of a stiffer consistency. It actually really melts into the skin nicely. It feels really cushiony and plumping and it's lawless. So they designed this with makeup in mind. It actually makes a really lovely primer because it does feel smoothing across the skin and it hydrates the skin really nicely. And texturally, it plays well with makeup. But I've even used this in the evenings because it does have a bit of richness, um, not too, too rich, not too emollient, just right in between. Um, and it, it feels like it's staying on throughout the night too. Then I have probably um, the stiffest formula in this lineup. It's the Summer Fridays Rich Cushion Cream Ultra Plumping Moisturizer. This is something that I use essentially as a night mask to really seal in my routine. It's something that pairs really nicely with actives because it gives you that richness that you need. And this is what it looks like and it blends in really nicely. It does melt down into a nice moisturizer. So it doesn't feel like it's um, this sort of like dry, stiff formula across the face. It does deliver emollients and it stays on overnight if you want that kind of thicker, richer cream experience. And it's also fragrance-free going along with the theme, I guess, of today's video. My bougiest recommendation probably for this whole video is this Hoduesu Concentrated Ginseng Renewing Cream. So this is the sister product to the serum that I mentioned earlier. This is rich, it's emollient, mine's almost empty, which is tragic. Um, it is a looser texture. It's not like a stiff cream like the Summer Fridays, but it melts into the most incredible emollient, rich, yummy, delicious feeling cream on the skin. And I don't know what it is. I, it might be a placebo. It might be the luxury experience, but I do feel like I wake up with really smooth, pillowy, plump skin when I use this. I don't know what to tell you. I like bougie things, but I do feel like this cream really works and my mom loves it too. I actually only have one oil. I'm not a big oil user, but this is an oil that I've actually been pretty loyal to and I've emptied a couple of times. It's the Mara Universal Face Oil. This includes algae and moringa, and I really love moringa oil, but it's a nice blend of different oils. I love this because it's not too heavy for my skin type. I don't like really, really heavy oils, and I find that this blend of oils just hits the right note. Um, comes in a beautiful glass bottle, and I mean, you're not really gonna be able to see much with the oil, but that's what it looks like. It has a light golden color, as Moringa oil generally does. Because I'm picky, I look for oils that my skin does actually drink up and that don't just leave a film, like a greasy film on my face. I hate that. So this oil is one that actually feels like gets absorbed in, into my skin, softens my skin, seals everything in, but it doesn't feel slimy. <laughs> Let's go into lip care. So lip balms, oils, uh, lip masks. I have a few different textures. If you like a lip oil, I actually forgot to mention these in my makeup video, but they're good for moisture as well. The In Beauty Project um, Lip Oil Glaze is really nice. They have a bunch of different shades. They have clear, they have more pigmented ones, they have um, slightly shimmery ones. They have really cute gift sets as well. I think they're really cute stocking stuffers. And I think they're 
something that everyone of all ages will love. I especially love um, the shade Cookie. It's this milky, beigey color. Um, looks really nice paired with a lip liner. I also love Berry Jam. That's one of my favorites. They have ones that are more sheer, more opaque, and even though they're tinted, they actually moisturize the lips and they're a richer oil that doesn't just feel like it's sliding around. It kind of sticks onto the lips without being sticky. It just coats the lips and makes them look really luscious and shiny and full too. If you like something balmier, the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balms are really nice. I love the tinted version. Um, which one is this? Vanilla Beige, I wanna say. Yeah, they come uh, as a liquid balm with this angled applicator. This is the one I use actually day to day. It lives in my purse. They recently came out with um, a mint one. It's called Sweet Mint and it's not a burning mint. It's actually more like a candy mint. It has that sweetness and it doesn't tingle on my lips, which is really key for me. I don't love something that burns. So this is just the right level of mint for me personally. For a richer lip mask, the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask is still my favorite. They actually just came out with a caramel apple version for holiday and it smells so good. I wasn't sure how it would smell, oops, but it actually, smells like the real thing, like real caramel apple. I think the caramel is a bit stronger than the apple, which I happen to like. It it, it has that like butterscotchy sort of caramely scent. Um, but I also love the vanilla one. That's the one I use uh, most regularly and repurchase most regularly, as well as their lip glowy balms. Their lip glowy balms are a little bit uh, lighter in texture. So if you don't want something as rich, um, that's a nice one to have. Or if you want to try a new lip mask, the Pharmacy Lip Smoothie is really, really nice. They have um, this apple scent that smells so good. It smells like crisp, fresh apple, and it looks like this. It's also really rich and buttery, and I feel like it gives me long-lasting moisture. It's a nice mix-up to the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask when I'm in the mood for it, so I really do love both of these. Oh, I guess they're both apple too. I didn't plan for that, but it just happened. And then finally, I'm gonna close this out with SPF. One of my longtime favorites, I've emptied multiple tubes of this. This one's also almost empty, is the Paula's Choice Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid. It's SPF 50, and it has a really lightweight, milky texture. This is a chemical SPF, and I find that it never irritates me, it never, um, pills under makeup. It gives me great protection and the lightweight texture makes it so easy to apply and get sufficient um, be a sufficient amount um, And it, it doesn't ever feel greasy. It actually almost just feels like a fluid lightweight milky moisturizer My other chemical SPF favorite is the dr. Jart everyday sun fluid. It's broad spectrum SPF 50 I would say these two are pretty comparable. This one might be um, a little bit a little bit richer more stiff, like a lotion consistency, but the experience on the skin is quite similar in that it's also lightweight, it's hydrating, it's easy to apply, looks good under makeup. Um, obviously there's no white cast because they are chemical SPFs. I also feel like this is such a generous size. You get 100 milliliters or 3.38 fluid ounces. This one is two ounces, just to compare, but I love and stand by both of these and they do tend to sell out. The one mineral SPF that I love is the Summer Fridays Shade Drops Broad Spectrum SPF 30. So this is um, zinc oxide and it's one of the few mineral SPFs that I do truly love. It comes out as this milky color. This is the tube, but it feels super lightweight on the skin. It's not gritty. It's not um, sandpapery the way certain uh, mineral SPFs can feel. It has minimal white cast. I won't ever say a mineral SPF has no white cast, but it is on the more minimal and slightly sheer side. Again, every skin type is different. Every skin tone is different. I just wanna give you a variety of options. And then finally for SPF touch-ups, my favorite um, that I don't think people talk about enough is the Soleil Toujours Clean Conscious Set and Protect Micro Mist SPF 30. 
And this is also water resistant up to 80 minutes. And this is all chemical SPFs. It's the nicest, most elegant SPF touch-up spray I've used. A lot of SPF touch-up sprays feel really greasy or oily. I think it's actually a very difficult category to formulate. This one, it gives you a really fine, elegant, even mist. It does leave a bit of shine, but I don't mind touching up with powder or blotting after it's set down because I don't feel it after it does set down. I'm not feeling like I have um, a slippery face after I use it. It does actually set down and it's it's used or it's formulated with that experience in mind. I know it's difficult to be diligent about SPF touch-ups, so I find that having different delivery systems like a mist is really helpful. All right, that is it for skincare. If you have any questions or you want a specific product recommendation, something I maybe didn't cover, or you want my thoughts on a specific product, let me know in the comments. I always like having conversations with you guys there, and I always want to know what you're picking up too. I will include um, part one linked in the description box with my makeup recommendations and then keep an eye out for fragrance, body care, and hair care that I'll include in the next video, which is part three. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are spending wisely. I hope you're making good decisions um, for yourself and for your wallet, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!